Hello there guys, it's Max so Diddly here and today I am here with another Java tutorial to help you get that A in your practical exam. Today we're here checking if the input is actually a number or not. So in your exam you're probably going to need to get the user to input some form of number and we don't want the user inputting letters or weird special characters in most case scenarios. So we're going to check if the user input has actually inputted an actual number or has just entered gibberish or random characters. And here's a quick simple way, so let's get right into it. So first we're going to make a variable for our input. We're going to call it string input and we're going to set it to um, duck. So basically the user has decided to be a rebel and decided to input duck when we've been asking for a, a number like a phone number, for example, or the house number. So now we've got the input. Underneath our main method, we are going to create a Boolean method. So we're going to do public static Boolean, and we're going to call it is number, and we're going to take in one variable, and that is string in. Then we're going to have our curly brackets. So this method is, is a public Boolean method. It's called is number and takes in one string, and we're going to call it in, and in will take whatever the value of input is. So in this case, it'll take the value of duck. Now in here, we're going to do something new. We're going to have a try and catch, and I'm going to write it, then explain it. So we're going to catch exception E. This will all make sense in a second. So. What is a try catch? Well, basically, we put some code in try, and, it, and Java will attempt to do it. If it fails in doing it, it will then go on to whatever code is in the catch. It's kind of like an if statement. If the, do this piece of code, if it works, move on. If it doesn't work, do what's ever in the catch bracket. That's a very simple way of explaining a catch. And in here, we're going to do integer dot parse int and we're going to pass in whatever in is into it. So you may be wondering, okay, what does this do? Well, if you don't know what it is, then you clearly don't listen in lessons as this is pointed out while a brother of this method, float.passFloat, is apparently heavily repeated as one of the most important things to know for your exam. This is basically a brother. Instead of doing float, floating points, it just does integers which we don't want a decimal number in our phone number, so we're using integer instead of float. The syntax is the same, we put in, instead of float we put integer, and we put pass here, and instead of float we put int, and in here we put whatever we want to convert to the integer. It's not that different. And we're going to do return true. And here we're going to put return false. And that's all for our method. So what does it do? Well basically, the method's called, we pass in duck into here. We attempt to convert duck to an integer. Unfortunately, duck can't, you can't convert letters into an integer. integer. So it's going to try and do it and fail. So it's going to go and do what's ever in the catch, and that is return false. Meaning, this input has something that isn't a number in it. Say if we, our input was 1, 2, 3. String in will take the value of 1, 2, 3. We'll tr attempt to convert 1, 2, 3 to an integer, which we can do, so it will return true. Because 1, 2, 3 is an integer. It's 123. Now we're going to quickly make an if statement. So we're going to do if is number, then we're going to do string. If I can actually do brackets, that would be nice today. We're going to do our curly brackets, and I just remembered this is input, not string. I don't know why. Then we're going to do j option pane dot show message dialog. I'm going to do null. I'm going to do. I'm going to do valid. And then we're going to do an else. And then we're going to do j option pane dot show message dialog null invalid. So what's going on here? Oh, I need to right click and do fix imports to import the J option pane library. So what does this do? Well, basically, 
We go on the if statement and we are calling our is number method. If it returns true, we're going to execute this block of code. Otherwise, if it's not true, we execute this. In, in this case, it would be if it's false. And if it returns true, as we established before, it means it was able to make this an integer. And then it'll print out it's valid, because it's a valid number if it was able to be converted to an integer. However, if it failed to be converted to an integer, it's going to print invalid as this method returned false. And therefore, it's not a valid input for a number. And that's all. So let's test this. And it printed valid because 1, 2, 3 can be converted to an integer. Now we're going to do um, duck. And this will be invalid, by the way. And look, it prints invalid because, as we established before, invalid can't be converted into an integer. Now, you, let's try doing words, letters, and numbers. So we're going to do Jordan Gamer123. And this should be invalid, by the way. And it prints invalid. Because, yes, 123 is an integer, Jordan Gamer isn't. It's a string made up of many characters. So it will return invalid. And we'll try one more. Wait, we need to close this first. Wait, where'd it go? Uh, yeah, we don't want it open. Right. One more thing we're going to do. We're going to do plus plus. And a slash and a dot and a star. Because these are just random special characters. This should be invalid, by the way. Yep, because we can't pass, we can't make these an integer. And we're going to do one more. We're going to do 4.0. And this should be invalid. Yep, because we can't make a decimal an integer like that. Also, there is a decimal point and it will attempt to convert the decimal point into a number, which it can't do. So anyway guys, that's all for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. This is a cheeky, quick way to check if your input is a number or not. And we will do this for like names and other things that you need to input, get the user to input in your practical exam. So be sure to leave a like in the comment, even though I just said that. And if you've got any questions, be sure to leave a question in the comments below and I will answer. If you need any help, ask and I will help you. And be sure to subscribe as I'll be posting regular Java tutorials to help you get that A in your practical exam. I keep saying that. I don't know why. So yeah, thanks for being a great audience and we will see you next time.